Well, Bungie was back this week with their This Week at Bungie update and gave us an in-depth update on SBMM, plus a whole load of stats for the latest returning raid in Destiny 2, and that was King's Fall. Today I'm going to round up all the latest news from Bungie and Destiny 2, so let's get to it. Well, first of all, I'm going to dive into the King's Fall stats, so Bungie said another world first has come and gone, this time bringing down beloved King's Fall raid from Destiny's past. Their players from all over the world gathered their fire teams and headed in to take out Oryx one more time, and it was a close race. We had many teams all vying for that top spot, but only one could be victorious, and the winning team was a shocker. Not because they didn't put their best foot forward, but because this is their third time in a row winning Worlds first. And I don't care who you are, that is absolutely impressive. So Clan Elysium is back with their three-peat win, with an all-star lineup for Salter, Greppo, Cruz, Kiros, Vile Fate, Moople, and Quaz. They were along for the ride. They dodged, they dunked, they made a few hilarious missteps along the way. But you know what? They had a lot of fun, and the look of sweet, sweet relief on their faces when they realised they'd finally reached the coveted finish line was a sight to behold. You know, huge congrats to this team again. It was definitely a wild ride from the start to the finish. Well, now we know who won, but what about some of the other fun facts to herald the return of King's Fall? Let's break it all down. Well, in terms of the King Fall stats, so total players that entered the raid, so normal... 458,120. Then challenge mode, it was 35,678. Total guardian deaths, so we had normal mode, about 33 million. Then challenge mode, it was about 2.8 million. So players that cleared totems on normal, 158,000. So that is down from 458,000 who went into the raid. So 300,000 players got checked at totems. In challenge mode, it was 31,000. That was down from 35,000, so not really that much of a difference. Players that cleared War Priest, so normal, 63,000. That is down from 158,000 that cleared Totems, and then also down from 458,000 that went into the raid. So 63,000 in normal mode only went on to defeat the War Priest, and that is a massive DPS check. And if you've stepped into the Kingsfall raid, you probably know what I'm talking about. War Priest can be a big tanky boy. In terms of challenge mode, it was 21,727 managed to clear War Priest. So then players that cleared Golgoroth, normal mode, 52,958. Challenge mode, 19,341. Players that cleared Daughters, 49,873 on normal. On challenge mode, 19,028. So it seems like Golgoroth is quite an easy encounter. And then players that yeeted Oryx into Oblivion, normal, 49,245. Challenge mode, 17,107. So total hours spent in King's Fall, normal, 1,989,371 hours. So challenge mode, 208,295 total hours. So basically, we've got a lot of emblems to give away and quite a few raid rings to dole out. And for those who do get emails, we're still working through that. You want to keep an eye on for the next Bungie newsletter, in that, we'll be breaking down your own Raid Complete report to see those ups, those downs, those sideways yeets off a cliff edge. Well, next up today, let's have a look at Crucible matchmaking, and this one is a check-in. So Bungie said, this season, we implemented the loose skill-based matchmaking SBMM that we talked about back in August. So to talk about the launch of this revised feature is principal designer Alan Bain, here with a vibe check in the PvP verse of Season of Plunder. So take it away, Alan. Well, Alan goes on to say, Hi folks, that sure was a great start to Season of Plunder in Ritual Land. We've seen a significant uptick in the number of players and the amount of time spent within Crucible. So while we are excited to talk about the bright future of Crucible development, I'm sure you want to hear about the loose SBMM we added to Control. So as we talked about in an earlier twab, one of the functions of Season 18 Control Node is to help us tune a solid 6v6 matchmaking setting before we start implementing new matchmaking features like team size and dynamic skill ranges. We're going to start with a fun tale about live game development just to illustrate why we like to run smaller tests before rolling things out. So if you want the weekly stats and future details, just skip down to the stats from week one section. Well, let's get into it. So Control Week 1, starting at reset on August 23rd, loose SBMM in Control was supposed to go live. Instead, players who joined Control found they were matched up against anyone and everyone. Skill didn't seem to matter and neither did platform. Normally, PC players are separated from console, and Stadia players are via matchmaking. So, 
what happened? Well, during the day's patch update for Season of Plunder, the file with the new matchmaking settings were not updated, and instead, Control used our default matchmaking settings. Once we found the bug and figured out what was going on around 7pm on the same day, we got the file updated on the servers, and everyone was using loose SBMM, and hooray, this illustrates a couple of key points. So we do apply updates and weekly resets on Tuesday rather than Friday, so when something unexpected happens, no one must pull weekend heroics to fix the game. We make changes in one location first to make sure it's stable before expanding it to other users, especially when we're exercising systems that haven't been changed recently. Well, moving on, default matchmaking. So the default matchmaking that everyone played until 7pm is never actually seen in-game if things go well. It's designed as a fallback that just works and finds people to play with but doesn't do anything clever. Default matchmaking ignores platform, skill, and almost everything else. The only thing it takes into account is latency, but only for the first 15 seconds of matchmaking. After that, it's no holes barred. So on the morning of August 23rd, if your control match took longer than 15 seconds to matchmake, which it almost always does, it was basically picking up the first 11 people it found, no matter how good the connections were, what platform they were on, or what skill there was. And of course, this would cause some laggy players, bad hit registration, and matching with players far outside your normal skill band. That is why sometimes we spend multiple minutes on various matchmaking thresholds, making sure latency is as solid as we can get it. Okay, moving on, stats from week one. So as of 7pm on Tuesday night, we've had loose SBMM on in control, and we got some interesting results, so let's dive right in. First of all, population. So in the first week of Season of Plunder, 140,000 more hours of control have been played than the first week of Season of Haunted, we also had an 11% increase in the total number of players playing Control. So this isn't in the TWAB, but this is a slight caveat here that Bungie did a mass marketing campaign. There's been loads of collaborations. There's been the Epic Game Store, all that kind of stuff. They've really been marketing the hell out of Destiny 2. So overall, the player numbers and the player population is up by a drastic amount. And in the TWAB here, it does look like Bungie are saying there's an increased number of players in Crucible or in Control and it could be related to SPMM. I don't think that is the case. I just think there's loads more players coming in because it's the first week of the season. Well, next up, we've got matchmaking time. So overall, our average matchmaking times went up by an average of about 5 to 10 seconds. That's a good indication of the matching is generally working, but isn't showing our worst cases. The lower population segments, so extremely low and high skill. For the highest skill bands, less than 0.1% of the population Matchmaking times average around 90 seconds during high population times, spiking to just over 200 seconds at low population times. For the lowest skill band, we are seeing matchmaking times between 120 seconds at best and 240 seconds at worst. So quick bit of math there, 240 seconds, that is about 4 minutes. So that is not good at all. Just looking at matchmaking times, the current settings look like they're getting us to where we want to be. However, we are cautious about making too many assumptions right now. We have plenty of anecdotal evidence of bad connections in those high-skilled games. And week one is one of the highest population moments of the season. So next up, skill differences. The skill difference we see in control matches are pretty stark. Without SPMM, only 10% of matches had 600 or less skill difference between the highest and lowest players. With SPMM on, we see that 80% of games have that separation or less. For 90% of the games, without SPMM, the average skill of all players within the game was between 300 and minus 100, and now we see a significant number of games with a high average of 600 skill, and regularly as low as minus 500. So that is a little bit confusing there from Bungie, they're not really clarifying those numbers. I know they did go over it in a recent TWAB, but I really think they need to put a key or something here to help explain it. Well next we've got game outcomes, so looking at the game outcomes, now, where our work really matters, we see more interesting data. Mercy games are down 4%, not as much as we'd hoped, but it's been shrinking a little by little, day by day. And games where the score threshold have been met remain steady, and games that go to time rose by 4%. These are all within range, and we expect the first few weeks to be more chaotic than normal, as players readjust their playstyles from optimised play against a wide variety of players to optimised play against similarly skilled players. The skill system will adjust to reflect those changes, we would expect Mercy games to shrink slowly over the coming week, and if time limit games rise consistently during that time, we'll likely look at the score goal to lower it to compensate. As far as score and skill differences, we see a similar set of incremental improvements. Games where the best player had 30 plus kills or more, and the worst player went down from 9% of games to 2% of games, 
and games where the best player only had 10 to 19 more kills than the worst player went from 35% to 55% of games. Well, this is all evidence from Bungie, but I would love to hear what you think of Crucible at the minute. I've heard a lot of high-skilled players, streamers, and a lot of people that talk publicly about Destiny 2. They're really not enjoying SBMM changes inside Control at the moment. So I'd love to hear from you and let me know in the comments what you think of the current state of Crucible and specifically SBMM in Control. Well, next up, let's have a look at quitting. So we've got one worrying trend in the data. The percentage of players quitting before the end of the match has risen from 8% to 12% in the last week. This is especially bad with matches designed to be balanced of 12 equally skilled players. And we are investigating to see if this is localized to a specific cohort or playstyle, or if this is a natural player reaction to a new system. And this percentage may reduce over time, so please do stay tuned. Well, finally then, we've got future plans. There are a number of points of concern that we are addressing. The number of poor connections during matches, the number of players quitting matches early. Other than those, most of the analytics have been positive, and considering this is a new experience, it'll take some folks time to get used to it. Well, for now, we're taking a few steps. We're extending the time that loose SBMM will sit and wait for the best connection quality between group leaders. Hopefully, this will increase the overall connection quality when matchmaking goes past two minutes. And we have some new analytics coming online soon which should give us a better picture of the connection quality between all players within matches, not just group leaders. And we're going to be adding quitter protection in control to a future patch. We hope to discuss more in a future TWAB. For the immediate future, you can look forward to Iron Banner next week with a new eruption mode. Need a refresher on what that is? No worries, we've got you covered. You can find that article on Bungie.net. Well, really, really interesting stuff. Again, I would love to hear what you think about SBMM and the changes in Crucible. So audience feedback is really, really important. I don't normally go into Crucible or spend too much time in there. You know, I might do my weekly pinnacles or I might do something for the ritual weapon each season. But to be honest, I'm much more of a PvE player. I don't really spend too much time in PvP. So for all you PvP players out there, I would love to hear from you. And let me know down in the comments what you think of the SBMM settings in control right now. And let me know what you think of the state of PvP. Well, that is it for this look at SBMM and also the King's Fall stats and all the latest news from Bungie and Destiny 2. And as always, thank you so much for watching or listening. For more Destiny 2 content like this, hit that subscribe button down below and subscribe to This Week in Video Games. Or you can check me out on Twitter at TWIVG Podcast. If you enjoyed this video, found it useful, liking and sharing the video would really help me out. Otherwise, check out the other videos on the channel. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.